You know my signature.
we just have a, a, a good time. You know, it's sort of winding down for us. We're all going off to do different things and stuff. So that's one of the reasons here. But interestingly, you know, we talk about this second issue. Uh, um, you know, worldview, understanding like how is it that we look at this world as Christians, you know, our, our look at the world, our approach uh, to this life. Um, I wanted to read some scripture real quick this morning. Uh, this is coming from John chapter 17. We actually based the whole album uh, around this this whole um, passage of scripture, the album called Holy Culture. It's actually dealing with the same issue we're talking about now. How do we live? Godly, you know, in a godless world. You know, Jesus was on his way uh, to the cross, basically. He knew his time was coming, so he began to prepare his disciples uh, uh, for his death. So he, he did that through a prayer, at least right here in this prayer, one passage called the High Priestly Prayer. So he's praying to the Father, and he begins to start talking about his disciples as well. He says, verse uh, chapter 17, John chapter 17, verse 13, says, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I think that's an important point. Jesus said, I gave them the word, the word, I gave them your word, Father, and the world has hated them. Sometimes as Christians, man, like we don't realize, I mean, Jesus is saying he was hated, and that his disciples were hated, and any of us who have given the word, the world will hate us. Jesus says, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. Sometimes we're so busy trying to just jump in and be liked by the world. You know what I mean? We, wanna, we just want them to like us too, we just, at, at any cost. Again, we don't want to be hated, but at the end of the day, we are a part of a, a family. We're a part of a certain order, and that just comes along with it. Suffering in this world, they just don't understand the things of God. So there's things that they hate us for. When you begin to start doing things that, you know, basically move you away from Scripture, move you away from the things that Christ did, the things that the disciples did, all so that the world won't hate you, I, I guarantee you're setting yourself up for, to be in a funny place as a Christian in this life. We're in the world, but we're not of it. There's two different things going on. We're not to sit there and be isolated, to live like these monks, just separated from the rest of the world, like to think we're so holy because we're doing so. But at the same time, we're not to be, you know, these guys trying to blend in to everything, just to, you know, we lose our Christian distinctive just because we're trying to blend in. And the next point he goes on to make clear, he says, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil. So Christ is even saying, like, you pull them out of the world, keep them in there, protect them from the evil one, which we know to be Satan, but mix it up. That's why they're here, to fulfill the great commission, to preach, to teach, to baptize, to prepare the way, because the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back, not just for those who, um, who are saved, but bringing judgment on this world. So that's why we're left here. He, he makes the point again, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He says, sanctify them in truth, your word is true. And that's like one of the last key points. Well, how is it that we're going to make it in this world insulated, not isolated? What is it that's going to set us apart and make us different, make, uh, you know, show a distinctive in the Christian life? It's the truth. It's the word. He said, uh, sanctify them, which is a word that means separate, you know, set apart. And let them be set apart by the truth, by the word of God. That's what makes us different. You know what I mean? We, we don't dress any different. We don't look any different on the outside. And if we try to, we'd probably be trying to lean on some law that we thought would give us some kind of favor in God's eyes. But at the end of the day, the thing that separates us is the word of God. He's putting us to change our that we have. How we live that out and display that. And a lot of, if you look at Christ or any of his disciples, like, it wasn't necessarily anything outward. It was the words that he spoke, the works that he did that set him apart. So, as we're here, um, you know, even at the Grammys, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's okay to be here, but the key is how are we going to be separated? How is it that people are going to know there's something different about us? It's the word, the word of God that makes us different. Ah, <laughs> So y'all stay tuned, turn the TV, it's time for us to get a quick bite. When we come back, we're going to, uh, let's talk about this last idea of success. So, you know,
know, how is it that we're going to function in the music industry and still be Christians, but be successful? Stay right there, you know.